A standard is the measure by which all others are judged. This definition fits standard water control systems perfectly. The company has won awards from Angie's List, the Minnesota North Dakota Better Business Bureau, and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. As a result, Standard Water has been featured on a number of TV shows that focus on home remodeling and repair, appearing numerous times on the popular Today's Home Remodeler TV series. In this section, we're going to look at some segments from Today's Home Remodeler. First, we'll look at a couple of homes and see how Standard Water's unique and innovative basement water control solution helps solve basement water problems. Then we'll take a look at an egress window installation. Watch carefully for Standard's patented diamond drainage board. It's a breakthrough product designed by the fertile minds at Standard Water Control and available exclusively to Standard Water's customers. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're solving a basement water problem. We'll begin with our homeowner, John Day, who will introduce us to the water problem he discovered in his basement. Next, we'll meet with Mike Hoganson from Standard Water Control Systems to learn what caused so much water to leak into this lower level. And we'll finish up seeing how a professionally installed interior drain tile system will help solve this problem. Whether a basement is finished off or not, nobody likes the thought of water in their lower level. But can anything be done to alleviate your worries? Well, on today's show, we'll begin with our homeowner, John Day, who is planning to finish off his lower level, but first needed to correct what most people would consider a serious water problem. Well, we've had water problems here for the last 10 years, and uh, we wanted to remodel, but we didn't want to do it until we got the water problem fixed. You know, you've done a good job tearing everything down, cleaning it up, but even still I see some residual mold growing on some of this wood here. Did you have a lot of mold behind the walls? Yeah, I was surprised uh, that we've actually had mold on some of these walls. We had most of the water come in on the other side of the basement. Well, you know, you think of a lower level, obviously it's damp because most basements are a little bit damp. How did you know that you had a major water problem? Well, a couple of weeks ago when we had the quick thaw, we had water coming in this room over here. I filled up two 16-gallon uh, shop vacs of water. It would not stop. It was coming in like a waterfall in here. Oh my gosh, two 16, that's a lot of water coming down the walls. Now, did you build this little dike right here? Yes, I did. I was trying to stop the water to go into the finished part of the basement. And I had heard that if you pour some quick creed, you can make a quick dam. I was trying to run it to the floor drain. <laughs> so that's kind of a band-aid on this problem. Now, how long did you live in this home? Well, we're going on 11 years now. Now, did you build this dam as well, or is that the previous homeowner? That was here when we moved in, and I could see why he did that. That was another Band-Aid. And you can see it's even cracked right here, so there's a lot of water behind the walls. You want to finish off this lower level, how'd you find a solution to this problem? Well, a friend of mine uh, called Standard Water. He had the same problem I did, and uh, he's uh, had no problems in his house ever since. Well, it's great that there's a solution to a problem like this, because after all, the lower level, that can be some valuable living space, especially in this day and age. One of the more popular remodeling projects many homeowners are investing in these days is finishing off the basement of their home. The idea of creating more living space in the lower level of a home, however, usually presents some concerns. Will water seep in and damage a finished area? Is it possible to add some natural light? Well, on today's program, we have a contractor who has the solutions to these questions and more. So let's meet up with Mike Hoganson to get our project started. Now, Stu, we've got a lot going on in this home. One is uh, we've got a, a water problem, water building up inside the block. We're going to be installing an interior drain tile system. The other is we're going to be putting some glass block windows in. You can see this window here has had some problems with water filling up in the well. 
and then overflowing. Holy cow, as I look at that window, I can actually see out through the frame itself. Yeah, it's not a very good window. It's not energy efficient. Where the glass block is energy efficient, watertight, and burglar proof. And it lets a lot of sunshine or light in. Sure, so it sounds like a functional solution to their problem. Yeah, it, it is. It will have a vent in the top so you can still get air circulation. Oh, so if you want to open it up, that's a nice feature. Yes, it is. So is this the extent of their water problem? Uh, just the water coming in through the window? Oh, no, absolutely not. This, this homeowner had a problem where their lift station malfunctioned and they had a foot and a half of water down here. Oh, my gosh, that's got to be every homeowner's nightmare, having any water in the basement, yet alone a foot and a half. Yeah, during the rainstorm, the, the pump did malfunction and the groundwater built up about a foot and a half deep. Now, you can see... They gutted everything down here. They took all the insulation out, all the sheetrock out because of mold issues. They left these two by fours in and you can see how high the water was. Look at that, they're all rusted right off where the water soaked the nails. Right, and um, you can see that somebody attempted to try to seal the cold joint where the block and the foundation meet. Look at that, they did that all the way around as I look. Well, they used different products. Here we have caulking. And you can see in this corner, that caulking isn't working. We're, we're getting water in from the, the last rain. Oh, look at that. So really, just to let the homeowners know that they're not familiar with concrete block, it is porous, it's hollow inside, and if the water gets in, what you really want is drain tile underneath there, right? You can't waterproof a home. You cannot stop the water, okay? The best you can do is channel and control the water. Take it from where you don't want it, put it where you do want it, and get rid of it. Here we're getting water building up inside the block. Now we're going to attempt to drain that water from the block down to the drain tile underneath the floor, downhill to the pump, pump pumps it outside. So what they were doing here by sealing the cold joint is really just blocking that flow. The water wanted to come in. They're just raising the water level up in the block. Right, and you can see that you know the water then came here and started running right down the block. Sure, look at how stained it is. Okay, what are they going to do in this area? Are they going to refinish the basement? Well, this area is going to end up to be a bedroom. And we're, right about here, we're going to put an egress window in, a legal fire escape window, so this will be a legal bedroom, legal living space. As it is right now, you can't really legally have a bedroom here. Sure, because there's no way to escape. Right, in case of an emergency. Over here, the homeowner would like to put a bathroom. And that would require replacing this lift station. This isn't really a legal lift station for a bathroom. It, all this does is it collects the water from the laundry and carries it up and out. Okay, so when I first looked at it, I thought it was a sump crock, but then again, there's no drain tile here now, so that was just simply to drain any water from the washing machine when they were using it. And the floor drain. The floor so drain. when okay. water did come in the basement, it could go to the floor drain and then across and over to here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna replace it with this sump basin. You're able to seal it off. It's got a large hole in here so you can get a four inch pipe in there so you can put your toilet, shower, vanity all into here. So you're actually helping them with more than just a drain tile system. You're helping them finish off this entire basement. Absolutely. By putting in a bathroom, an egress window in the basement, you're going to get the largest return on your investment. You're going to create living space down here. Sure, and by adding the drain tile on top of it, it's really an insurance policy that all that hard work and money you're putting into it is never going to be damaged in the future. Well, absolutely. It wouldn't be very smart to do all this work without the drain tile. Now, how do we get the drain tile installed? What's the first step in this process? Well, we're going to jackhammer up the floor about 18 inches out from the wall, expose the footing, and then we'll start digging a trench beneath the floor. Well, it sounds like a, a messy and noisy job. Why don't we get out of here, let them get started, and we'll come back and pick up the process a little further along. Sounds good. Stay tuned. We'll learn how a drain tile system functions and the benefits of installing a sump pump with a battery backup next, when we continue with today's Home Remodeler. In our last segment, we saw some of the challenges going on in this basement remodeling project, including a very serious water seepage problem. A drain tile system was the remedy, so our water control crew began by jackhammering around the perimeter of the basement floor. A trench was dug down below the footing of the foundation, while the concrete and dirt was hauled out in buckets through a basement window. Now let's catch back up with our water control specialist, Mike Hoganson, to walk us through the rest of the process. 
Well, Mike, the guys have really made some progress, working rather quickly in this basement. Well, they're a real good team, hard workers. Get a lot done in a short period of time. Okay, now what's gotten us to this point so far? Well, what the crew has done so far is they've taken up the floor, jackhammered up the concrete all the way around the entire perimeter of the basement, approximately 18 inches off from the wall. They then excavated the soil beneath the slab at a downhill grade to the sump basin. This starts over here approximately six to eight inches deep and it goes downhill to the pump. Then we drilled holes in each and every cavity of the block. Now the blocks are hollow and they can collect water. And the holes allow that water to drain out of the block, across the footing, and down to the trench. Boy, you know, as I put my finger in here, it's moist in there, but nothing like in the other corner where we had seen the puddling in an earlier segment. That water just poured out of there. I couldn't believe how much was in there. Didn't surprise me. After they had it dug up, they drilled the hole, so they put a bed of gravel in this trench about three inches thick. And what that is, is a, it acts as a drainage medium to allow the water to flow through it easily, but yet hold any dirt or sediment back so that it can't plug sure. up the drain tile. Then they placed the tile in. The tile is a rigid PVC, three inch, with the holes facing down. That, the holes are down at the bottom, so as the water fills up in the trench, it can get into the drain tile easily and get carried downhill to the pump. That makes sense. Now, why job for the rigid PVC versus the coiled uh, black stuff we see in the hardware stores? Well, over the years, I've learned that the rigid pipe works best. It stays at a nice downhill slope. The other tile comes in a 250-foot coil, and it tends to go in like a roller coaster, and you don't get a nice downhill slope like I would like to see. Um, also, it's got these quarter-inch corrugations that after the water quits draining out of it, you still have at least a quarter inch of water sitting, mm -hmm. sitting inside that drain tile that would then have to evaporate into the home and potentially cause some humidity problems. Oh, that makes sense. And that's the, the voice of experience talking there. There's one other thing. With the rigid pipe, we, we get the 90 degree elbow so we can get tight into the corners. And also it's got 45 degree el elbow so we can work around plumbing pipes or, or fixtures. So yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I noticed there's a water heater that was mounted very closely to a wall. What do you do in a situation like that? Because you can't really jackhammer it up without moving it, and that'd be an expense to the homeowner. They have to get a plumber in here. Th that's correct. What we're able to do, as long as we're able to have about three to four inches of concrete behind that that we're able to remove and drill the holes in each and every cavity of the block there, it's very important. We don't want to miss one cavity. We're, we will tunnel underneath the fixture. So we get the drain tile through, we put gravel around it, we pack gravel in there, we drill the holes behind it so we can still get drainage out of it. Now Mike, what is this component? Well Stu, this is something I'm really excited about. It's our diamond drainage board, our patented system that we developed over the years. We've been in the business 27 years and we came up with this idea and we call it the diamond drainage board. Well how the heck does it work? Well you've, you've got this, these diamonds that are approximately a quarter inch deep. Now they would sit on the footing. Let me show you here. It, this is adjustable so we can adjust it depending on the thickness of the concrete. Oh I see that's why it's scored here so you could you could bend it or do a break right here, 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 or there. That's correct. Okay. okay now that would sit on the footing. Now you can see the diamonds are sitting tight to the footing and we still have plenty of drainage underneath oh, it. Sure, Unrestricted it, flow. So as the water comes out of the holes it hits this, uh, the back of this and the diamonds allow, you know, elevate this enough to allow f good facilitation. That's correct. Now, it's, what's really great about it, Stu, is when we pour the concrete back, we're able to put the concrete back as thick as it was to begin with, you know, versus uh, other systems where you might use gravel across the footing. That would take up about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of space, so you would get only a couple inches of concrete back. Where here, we're going to be able to pour this concrete back three inches thick, the concrete is also going to go down and fill inside these diamonds, allowing us to get contact, full contact, to the footing and the wall. And again, when you say fill into the diamonds, you're talking on the top side here where they're indented there and really lock it in place. That's correct. And that will put back the structure integrity of the foundation. This would be one continuous piece all the way around and there's no way it can plug up. Also, we've got this V at the top in case you get any condensation on your walls. It can travel down get caught in that V and get into the system. Well, you really thought of everything with this. Well, there's one more thing. 
it's flexible enough that you can bend that back in case you're going to remodel the basement, such as uh, this homeowner is going to remodel the basement, and he's going to bend this back, run some poly behind here, run it up the wall and attach it at the top so he's got a moisture barrier. In case there is any condensation on the walls, it'll travel down behind the system. So how do we finish up the project? Well, what we have here now is we have to put the gravel in all the way around the drain tile. Again, we've got three inches of gravel underneath it. Now we're going to go all the way around it to keep any potential dirt or anything to get near it. Then we'll put plastic over the top of the gravel and then we pour the cement back and then we're done. And you'd barely even know we've been here. And that takes care of this system? That takes care of the drain tiles too. There's one more important component to the system that would be the pump. I'd like to show you that. Now what's this pipe for? This wasn't here before. That's, that's correct. This is our seamless discharge. Over the years we've developed this product so we can drain the water from the pump outside. You'll notice that it's one continuous piece from where it enters the house and over to the pump with absolutely no fittings that can potentially break or leak. This also won't freeze or crack so we have no maintenance with it. Stu, this is the pump that we use. Oh, this is nice to be able to see a sump pump outside of the crock. Yes, yeah, it's a one-third horsepower cast iron little giant pump. Now, what I know about sump pumps is they usually have a float on them, but I don't see one on this one. Well, this one works on a pressure switch. We prefer that because the floats tend to get stuck on the side of the basket. Very important component of, the, of your system is the pump, and if that float sticks, your basement's going to flood. Now this is obviously 110, but what happens when you have a heavy storm, lots of rain, and the power goes out? Good question, Sue. We have the answer for that right here. This is our battery backup pump. It's the Pro Series 2400. This is a unique looking device. Now this isn't the actual pump, is it? No, this, this is the pump. That's the computer. That monitors the level of the battery. It monitors the primary pump. It monitors the electricity. And this also runs a test on your backup pump once a week to make sure it's working. Boy, is this great peace of mind. So you go to the expense of remodeling your basement, finishing it off. If you go away on a trip or something, how do you know that everything's safe when you hear you have a big storm back there? Well, that's a real good question. With this one here, you can actually get a piece of equipment that you can attach to the back of it that will call you and let you know that your primary pump has failed and the backup pump has kicked in. Good, so a good idea to have a battery backup, a second pump. Stick around. Now that we've solved the water seepage problem, it's time to add some windows. And we'll do that next. Earlier in today's program, we began with a basement remodeling project that needed to solve a water seepage problem before adding drywall and finishing it off. A drain tile system with a battery backup sump pump was selected and professionally installed to assure the homeowners of no future problems. In addition, our waterproofing contractor installed a new lift station in preparation for a lower level bathroom and is also installing a new egress window. So let's catch back up with our remodeling consultant, Mike Hoganson, to learn more about the installation of this increasingly popular basement window system. Let me show you where putting this egress window, Stu. Now be careful, it's a large hole. Wow, it looks like they, it looks like they dug this by hand. Oh yes, they did. This morning they came out, they dug it all by hand. Uh, we do that so we don't, we have minimal damage to the homeowner's property. Oh, that makes sense. So you didn't bring in a big backhoe because it could have rutted it all up and everything. Right, and also you see there's electrical lines here, phone lines. It also uh, is good so you can dig carefully. Oh, sure. Be a little more careful around here. You never know what you're going to run into. Um, I noticed there's buckets of dirt and then there's a pile of dirt. Uh, how do you usually get rid of it? Normally we'll load the dirt in the, our trucks and haul it away, but this homeowner wanted the dirt because they have some holes that they want to fill. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so they can actually utilize the dirt in here. What's the process for putting the window in? Well, the first is the layout, Stu. The homeowner wanted this window centered to the window up above. That makes sense. Okay, and then the first thing you do is you lay out the lines, you mount your rail, and then you make your cut. You can see I've already cut this side. So you're actually sawing through this, uh, is this 12 inch block you said earlier in the show? Yeah, it's a 12 inch masonry block. Okay, so what type of saw or equipment do you use to cut through this? Well, it's a, it's a diamond blade hydraulic saw here. Let me show you. It's a really nice saw. It's, it's unusual in the, in the fact that it allows you to, to get a full 10 inches of depth. Wow, that's, look at that, it doesn't pivot in the center like a typical saw that you see. Right, it, it runs on these wheels here and so that way we can get this whole depth. So you can actually do all the sawing from outside so you minimize the waste or, or the mess that's inside. Right. We don't have to have water and dust and everything inside the home. This keeps it all on the outside. 
Is it uh, pretty efficient as far as time-wise? I mean, how long does it take to saw this out? Just a couple of minutes. Okay. Are you the man that's going to tackle this project? I am. Why don't I get out of your way, let you finish sawing this, and then we'll pick it back up. Sounds good. That was really impressive, Mike. That only took a couple minutes to saw that. Pretty quick saw, isn't it? Okay, so once you have the both sides done, what do you do along the bottom? Because that needs to be cut out, doesn't it? That's a mortar joint. We're going to follow the mortar joint, and when we knock the block off from the inside, it'll just break right off at the mortar joint nice and smooth. Everything else at this point is really from the inside. Why don't we go take a look, and I'll show you what we're doing inside. Sounds good. Okay, so this is where the uh, egress window is going on the inside. Right now, Scott's marking the wall, and this is where we're going to score the wall. You remember I explained to you when we're outside, the block is 12 inches thick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now the saw went through 10 inches, and we just have to score the block here, and it'll break right out. And how do you go about scoring it? Well, he's going to use this uh, small jackhammer with the chisel bit, okay. and he'll follow that line. And then after that, they're going to use the most important tool of all. A sledgehammer. <laughs> well, why don't we get out of their way, let Scott have at it, and we'll pick it up when we're ready to build the window buck. Okay, that sounds good. Wow, well, Mike, the guy sure made short work of this opening. What do we need to do to finish off this project? Well, what we have to do now is we're going to trim this out with a 2x6 screen treated. And then we're going to set the window in place. We'll insulate around it. We'll trim it out on the outside with rough cut cedar. Uh, then the homeowner can paint it whatever color they would like. Sure, that's going to look nice. And then we'll set the window wall in place, fill it all up with gravel, and backfill around the window wall. So why don't I get out of your way? You and the guys can get at it, and we'll pick it up when it's finished. Sounds good. Mike, the finished egress window, and oh, nice smooth operation. It really adds a lot to the home. You can see all the light it brings in. It, ch it just changed the whole look of the room. The most important thing it does is it turns this room into a legal living space. It's for fire escape. Now there's some specific codes that you need to know about when you're putting in an egress window. One is that the sill cannot be any more than 44 inches off the floor. And of course that's so that someone down here can get in to access it to get out in the event of a fire. Absolutely. The clear opening, once the window is open, has to be 5.7 square feet. Also, the glass, when it's wide open, has to be at least 36 inches from the window well wall. Then when you're this deep, you also have to have steps, and you can see we've got many levels out there for easy escape. And the nice thing about those steps in this system that you have, I've seen where you know, you're not using it every day to get out. It's in the event of emergency. So you can put some flower beds in there. You can really dress it up nicely, and it's very attractive, in addition to being functional and letting the bright light into a basement. Absolutely. And just quickly to recap this, the situation here, I recall from segment one, you said that they actually had a flood down here, a couple feet of water in here. Foot and a half. Foot and a half of water down here. They had window wells that were leaking, so a lot of issues. You put the glass block in. You put the drain tile system in and the egress window, and now they have a functional lower level living space. That's true, and let's not forget that battery operated backup pump in case of power failure. So total peace of mind. Absolutely. I really appreciate you coming on today's show and walking us through this entire process. Thank you for having me, it's been a pleasure. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. If you're planning to remodel your basement, be sure to address any potential moisture problems that may occur before the remodeling gets started. If you have any questions, contact a waterproofing contractor for a consultation. And if you already have or are planning to add a drain tile system to your home, then consider a sump pump with a battery backup system. It's great peace of mind for the cottage or when you're on vacation and an emergency arises. And finally, if you're thinking about adding a bedroom or living space to your lower level, then consider the addition of an egress window. They offer additional light, more ventilation, and a safe way to exit the basement in the event of a fire. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on Today's Home Remodeler.